like nobody needs to hear another electric bass player talk about James Jamerson or Jaco Pastores. <laughs> like we get it, we get it. Those guys were great. Cool. Can we move on? Like there's. <laughs> I've had a blast following along with today's guest, and it was so great to sit down and chat with him for the podcast. I'm Jason Heath. This is Contrabass Conversations, and we are talking today with Ryan Roberts, who runs The Bass Shed, which if you're not following along with that, you definitely should, thebassshed.com, and that's all linked up in our show notes. Ryan does a whole bunch of different things. In addition to the podcast, he puts together these really immersive videos. He has a membership site where he deep dives. We talk about all that. And these are some of my favorite types of conversations is just real off the cuff, like two friends chatting. And I actually was on his podcast. I'm of course, I'm notoriously slow for putting things out on my end, just lots of moving parts here. So we chatted after this conversation for his podcast that came out already on his podcast. So check that out. That's also linked up in the show notes and yeah, great guy. What can I say? Really had a great time connecting with him. Thank you so much to our longtime sponsors, Modacity, A440 Violin Shop, Steve Swan, String Bass, Colstein Music, The Bass Violin Shop, Dario Strings and Upton Bass. Visit those folks. Consider a purchase from any of them. Help us all get through this pandemic together. All right, let's dig into this conversation with Ryan Roberts of the Bass Shed. Are you all all hunkered down? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> staying off of the streets? All that oh, kind of man. Stuff. Man, it's crazy. It's crazy. This whole virus thing is crazy. The LA's getting crazy about all of it. Like I don't know what it's like up there. You're up in San Fran, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's I think we're probably a little bit ahead of ahead of some other places in terms of the, you know, the spread. So it's yeah, it's really weird. I I live um in a pretty uh it's right, right off the water. It's a pretty well trafficked part of town, and it's it's you could throw a rock and not hit a soul. It's it's incredibly strange. Okay. Yeah. Man, yeah, the whole is yeah. It's just all bizarre. Like I was, I was walking around in my neighborhood. Um, I live in Venice. Okay, like right across yeah. the street from the beach, and so I was walking around in my neighborhood the other day, and this guy at the deli tells me that he saw a fist fight in the grocery store over. I don't know what they're fighting over, but it's just. This whole virus thing is everybody freaked out. It's nuts. Yeah, I haven't seen any fist fights, uh, but uh, but I've definitely oh, noticed. <laughs> and Tra- Trader Joe's has been like a little more out of like toilet paper and paper towels than normal. Sure. But but uh, yeah, it's 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 interesting. Yeah, I'm watching watching my my travel season. I usually have a pretty busy travel season, like January through right about now, and that's sort of done. Had a trip planned in a couple weeks that obviously just got canceled along with everything. Right. So, but man, it's been interesting. I talked to um, a couple people this morning uh, in Europe for the podcast, somebody in Prague and somebody in the South of France and both it's like in Prague gatherings of more than 30 people are banned. So um, yeah, this, this, uh, the the guy was talking to uh, this morning, uh, Haramir is, is, yeah, he's like, well, I all of a sudden have a ton of time in my hands. You know, I was going to be playing. (laughs) I know. I know. I was at a rehearsal this morning and the piano player was like, dude, how's your weekend shaping up? Like, what do you got gig wise? And I told him, and he's like, man, at least they haven't, you know, at least you still have them. Like, he's like, I lost like four this week. I'm like, dude. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's really, it's especially, Great. I mean, you know, uh, talking with some of the folks in the San Francisco Symphony, I'm sure the same thing in LA is happening, but like they, uh, they have been showing up for rehearsal, but they're not playing, they're going to play to an empty hall and live stream it or something. I, I don't really? know. Yeah. And I mean, that's one thing cause they're on salary, but then like, look at all the musicians that are, you know, per service out there grinding it out. And all of a sudden, sure. all, all, I mean, not to mention every business and everything. Yeah. It's a, it's a bizarre time for sure yeah it's seriously bizarre and I, you know like the other a few days ago when i heard about i'm not i'm not a basketball fan at all uh but when i heard that the nba was uh you know putting the season on hold or something i started to think about that not only the games you know mm-hmm. but like all the people that work at the stadiums that work as the parking attendants yep uh, the, you know like man man yep. this like this thing is really 
Yeah, it's uh, it's it's uh, cra- crazy times. Yeah, right. And not to, like I, here in San Francisco, we just opened up the Chase Center, where the, the new Warriors home, and there are all these restaurants that were just about to open up around there. Yeah. And so yeah, no, it's it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to it, like a year from now or two years from now or who knows how long from now to look back and like remember this this right, moment. Right, right, right. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we you know in like four months we'll be like yeah, remember that couple weeks that was funny. Uh, you know, I know. Hopefully it'll, I know. Hopefully it'll kind of all die down and things will get sorted. <laughs> Man. Whatever that means for I it know. all. I know. Yeah. Well, go. It's nice. It's nice to meet you over Skype, man. It's I've been I've been digging what you're doing. Um, and, oh, cool. Yeah, and and my buddy uh, Trevor Jones, who helps me yeah. out with the podcast, and he said, "You should you should contact Ryan." And I thought I should contact Ryan. We, we, should, <laughs> we should we should chat. So uh, yeah, it's really congratulations, and and um, you've been rolling the podcast since what was it uh, fall last year, middle of the 2019? Yeah, yeah I kind of started around like maybe. Yeah. Geez, when did I start? Maybe uh, late February, I think. And then um, I didn't know. Got man, got to be honest. I didn't know how much work was goes into them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'll start a podcast. Why not? Uh, I was completely unaware of what I was getting myself into. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Like people ask, I, I, I well, I, we have so much to talk about. <laughs> but I like sure, people, yeah, people, yeah, people, yeah. people ask, like, what, what if I wanted to get started doing something? What should I do? And I've been doing a podcast for a long time, but I almost always tell someone, oh, start a YouTube channel. It's just the barrier of like, <laughs> like, because there are so much like podcasting for me. It's like this long sequence of little steps, and none of them are that complicated. But when you put them all together, it's just a whole heap of work. It is, and there's like, uh, like so a friend of mine, a friend of mine who's actually been on my podcast, his name's Gary Wicks. Yeah, he, he's he used to told me about contrabass conversations. Hey, that's awesome! Yeah, and so then I started listening to it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is cool. Like, I really like this. Uh, you had a couple fantastic episodes. Uh, I remember the one with Larry Grenadier and Ron Carter specifically. Those were great. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. That was fun. Uh, have you seen the Miles documentary that they put on Netflix? There's some nice. Nice cutaways to run on there. I haven't watched. Is that on Netflix? All right, I'm yeah. adding, adding that to my list of coronavirus uh, w- <laughs> yeah, watching with all these extra. When you're not getting infected. <laughs> <laughs> Miles. Di- okay, cool. No, I haven't checked that out, but that's that's. Uh, I-, I will. Wow. Uh, so he told me about content, and I'm like, yeah, okay. And then I started. That was the first podcast like I ever got into. Wow. And so then I started checking out just podcasts. I was telling my brother about it, and he's like, dude, you, you know, you've been checking out like Rogan and Mark Maron, and mm-hmm. I'm like, no, I don't even. Who- like I know of Joe Rogan, like who's Mark Maron? So then, yep. you know, then I go down the rabbit hole of comedians and then I really got into comedians. Yeah. Uh, and comedians have actually been a, um, me and me and a bass player named John Pierce did an episode of the Bay shed podcast. And one of them, the first one didn't work out. We did it at a restaurant and there's too much back noise, mm-hmm. background noise. Uh, but I think it was on that one where we were talking about comedians a lot and like, how much I love co- comedy, stand-up comedy, and what a big influence they've been, like comedians have been on my career. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like, I really I really kind of check in with comedians a lot. After a while, like, bass players are talking about a lot of the same stuff. <laughs> it's like, yeah. all right, you know, unless it's somebody really specific I want to listen to, you know, like Ron or Grenadier. Um, that's not to discredit any other bass player, obviously. But... Uh, you know, it's a small world, and I, I, I kind of want to hear something new, so I listen to comedians. Well, yeah, it's 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 really interesting. I, uh, me too, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> we have a yeah. lot. I bet I'd love to compare one of these days our uh, our podcast lists. I bet we've got a lot yeah. of, a lot of overlap. Yeah. But it's interesting um, how many parallels there really are between a comedian's just sort of life experience, work experience, the hours that you put in. Um, that I mean, there really are a lot of parallels, and I learn a lot from. Actually, for all those people and more. And I, mean, I love uh, uh, just looking at Joe Rogan, who's, a, a, for me, a perfect example of like what's oh, the punk rock aesthetic of podcasting. I mean, nothing, right. nothing right. makes, th- n- nobody would ever, if you went to any executive and proposed what that show is, you know, yeah. at, at any point in the last yeah. 
hundred years, it, it would be that you'd be laughed out of the room. And it's the most, I think I'm getting this right. It's the most popular single show uh, there is right now anywhere bigger than any show on ABC or NBC or anything. I think it's oh, the, wow. I didn't know. I didn't know it was that status. I knew he was crushing the game within the podcast world, but I didn't know that was the most kind of uh, syndicated, if that's the correct yeah. word, you know, publication. Yeah, and I might be getting that wrong, but 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 it, it, anyway, the point the point stands is like it's incredible what and there are no rules, right? It, it, every episode's three hours. They're doing they're saying whatever they want, talking about whatever yeah. they want. I mean, it's I, that's one of the things that I love about uh, about the medium. Like I, I just think it's sure. a really and and just the no the the no rules, the long form, just and I think. I mean, it seems to me like you're kind of doing that. Like you're, you're not, you don't uh, like, do you try to do some sort of real clear structure? It, it seems to me like you're, you're kind of embodying I, that comedian. I don't. Yeah. I, I yeah. kind of, uh, I like, I like really getting into it and I'm sure you can identify with it too. When you're talking to somebody where you're, we're just in it and this stream of consciousness is just happening. Yeah. And, and I just ride that out. Um, you know, sometimes, and it also depends on how well I know the person before I speak with them. Yeah. So, I mean, the first couple episodes, you know, and, and still, like, they're, they're my friends. They're mm -hmm. guys I've played with. And, like, dude, you want to do this? Like, I'm doing a thing. You want to do it? Uh, and so then I just go over to their place and we talk. Um, if I already know them, it's different than if I'm meeting them for the first time for the episode. Um, but, yeah, just kind of, like, let's see, let's see where it goes. Yeah. Like, let's just... You know, I'm interested. I'm interested. And it's been really uh, kind of cathartic in a sense. And I, I didn't think it was going to be that. I didn't anticipate that happening. Uh, it's been pretty cathartic to hear all these different stories. And I know, for, at least for myself, it's just like, all right, mine's not that, uh, you know, all of a sudden I don't feel as isolated as I normally would just being a, Los, a musician in Los Angeles. Yeah. I think it's a very, you know. Uh, LA is a funny place in that sense, uh, within the circles I travel, like everybody's cool and we have, you know, there's a nice peer group and there's a nice community, but everybody's just off doing their thing and it's more or less detached and that's kind of just LA in general. So I, I'm not villainizing the, uh, <laughs> right. music community, <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm villainizing the city. Um, but, but there's that kind of culture here in Los Angeles and that happens in the music community. And so it's like when I get to connect with other uh, musicians and bass players, it's just like, yeah, all right, cool. We are all kind of just in it, doing it the same. It's not – I don't feel so isolated anymore. And that it's been really – it's been really cool for me. Well, yeah, that's such a, it's not, it sounds like you like doing podcasting for a similar reason why I like, you know, it, and part of it is for me is just that connection. Like we live in this world of endless feeds on Instagram and Facebook and you name it. And like, we're also running around doing our own projects and like, how often do you take an hour or an hour and a half or whatever and just carve out with even like a close friend just to like not have devices out, just right. like be talking. And like, so for me, I could just lie and say I had a podcast and I would get the benefit. So like for, like for me, it's, it's, it's like a vehicle. And also I, it makes me get out of my shell and get out of my familiar routines. And like whether it's sure. chatting with a friend and they all have their special challenges. Chatting with a close friend can be a challenge too and a very different one than someone you just haven't, you haven't met. And I, I don't, sure. everything about the whole like learning about people, re, it makes me listen to music I wouldn't listen to. It makes me mm -hmm. uh, uh, get uh, strike up a conversation with someone I don't know that well, which I can be kind of shy about. So okay. I, it's, it's all upside. The only downside is the work. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. There's, <laughs> there is, there's, there's definitely more back end work that I thought I like, I didn't, the whole, everything I'm doing at the base shed is a one man show and it's, yeah. you know, like I built the website, I do all the transcribing, I shoot the videos, I edit the videos. I'm, I book the podcast, I edit the podcast, I try to do marketing. Uh, it's a lot of work. Um, yes. <laughs> And uh, I mean, I love it, though. I absolutely love it. I, abs I absolutely love it. Uh, and I like, you know, even getting into video editing or, you know, geeking out on like trying to figure out what lights to use for video or like light placement for video. I'll spend like three days just geeking out on that. Uh, but I like it. I like kind of the the learning curve that's involved with it all.
Yeah, I love I love uh, being. I, I don't want the word amateur is maybe the wrong word, but for me personally, I'm trying to get better at taking photos and shooting video, and I'm like mm. I'm like super crappy at it. Like, I, I, but, <laughs> but but I, but I'm okay. Like I've got that sort of begin. Like like it's okay because I know I have a lot to learn, and it's kind of become my hobby. Like okay. I, about once a week, I try to go out and I bought some okay camera gear and some lenses, and I've been nerding out with all of that. And I try yeah. like once a week to just wander around San Francisco with. Uh, a telephoto lens or a couple of lenses and just like take photos and my mind kind of goes into this. I'm looking at the geometry of the place and, mm. think, and so I've been having fun and like I, I, I was shooting some videos over the summer and then I, and then life just got busy with travel oh, and other pro yeah. and, then, and then, so I started up again a couple weeks ago and I couldn't even remember how to do anything in premiere pro, you know, I'm like, <laughs> how do I kind of, so it's like starting over, but yeah, it's like, it's all good. It'll come back. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, no, I've definitely had to, uh, uh, go back in and like you know watch youtube tutorials i've already seen a few times about how to do things like all right what it's been a while since i've done this how do i do it again right <laughs> it's that's the command key uh, so now when you do you do that do you do you kind of uh are you into street photography like that where you just kind of walk out in nature and yeah, nature I, meaning you know an urban neighborhood too, not necessarily the mountains or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both like the the like wandering in different neighborhoods, and then also going into we got a lot of parks. You know, it's, it's California. Yeah. You know how it. And then uh, sure. I've been going. I've been. I I love taking photos of birds. So I've been taking. Okay. I, I take like way too many photos of of birds, <laughs> and then and then come home and move them all into Lightroom and see like, oh, why is that a good shot? Why is that not a good shot? Why is it? Can I play with it? Can I make it better? Is it? No, it was good as it is why is that so just like the whole it's a, it's like learning an instrument right like it's sure. it's like you could play an open d string i could teach anybody to like pluck an open d string or probably even bow an open d string but to like get down into you know it's such a there's so much depth to it so yeah it's right, right right then you you know if you're talking about the bow then you're talking about arm weight and all this stuff you know like it's on one on one level like the outside generic it's like yeah it's not that difficult but if you spend too much time with anything it's it's a whole other world yeah yeah, for uh, sure. I find it fascinating. I don't really, I'm not interested to get that deep in it, because mm -hmm. uh, you know <laughs> that is like I respect the fact that it's its own thing, and there's people that just do that, and they they nerd out on that just as hard as I nerd out on the bass. That's cool. Like mm -hmm. I don't want to go that deep with it, but uh, I, I do like learning the new skill sets that have come uh, that I've had to pick up through doing the podcast and doing the website. Yeah, All it's that a, stuff. It's, it's been a it, lot of fun. It's amazing how broad that skill set is when you really start to get into it. And like with the podcast, like, oh, I got to make an image that pops. Well, how do I do that? Oh, I got to come up with a title right. that makes sense. <laughs> oh, how do I write show notes? Or or do I write show notes? Or do I? You know, it's right. yeah, it's always it's very much a work in progress. Um, I think. Right. I think have probably, you kind of gone back and forth uh, on that? Like, have you done the show notes? Patch on the show notes? Kind of see which works better. Like, you know, I've tried it all. I think I've tried the show notes. I've, I've not. I've tried, you know, doing some pre-recorded clips on episodes. Then I've just, like, completely done a setup, you know, one take and super raw. I've just, uh, I've tried, I've kind of tried it all at some point to see what I like. I don't know what I like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've definitely played around over the over the years. I've kind of had a similar format for the last couple of years, but that is subject to change. Like at at any point, I, I, I've, 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 I've I haven't given a a good chunk of time to really think about. Um, changing the podcast up in any sort of substantial way, just because I'm kind of enjoying um, my personal experience with it right now, which is I, you know, basically yeah. my, I, I have, I have folks that work on the show now. So, so the, the, oh, wow. what, what I, but, yeah, but for a long time, it was just me for, <laughs> for a while. How long, how long you been in it? Like a couple years, right? Two, three years, maybe? Uh, uh, 13 years of podcast. 13 years. Thir two thousand wow. January 1st, 2007 was episode one. You oh can, my I'm promoting my MySpace page i'm telling you to go, <laughs> go buy my hats cups and t-shirts on my cafe press store um that's hilarious uh, yeah oh yeah so so it's been uh, i've been doing it for a long and so it's funny to um let's save that story i want i want that story <laughs> okay. on the bay shed podcast okay. actually I want, we'll save that story but i'm really sure. intrigued by it i didn't know it was that that long like podcasting was super new 
it was it was it was definitely uh yeah it was it was a few years in at that point definitely a different place where it is now and it's fun to go back and and uh, not that I do this a lot that'd be s- sure. sadistic but but um to go and lis- <laughs> listen to how how terrible my first oh let's say 160 episodes <laughs> were All right. you know um I, and it, you know it's just it's I like I, I but I know, the, the cool thing about something like that where you're doing something on a regular basis like a podcast or a blog or video or whatever is just that like showing your work in public and just like showing up it's kind of like showing up and doing gigs and you get better over yeah. time you learn i don't i think that there's a there uh, there's a, a beauty in that and so um, sure yeah yeah and like I'm, you know i've had instances with it where i'll start to grow in you know the content production side of things and like maybe tighten some things up and then the back of my mind is like, well, I got to uniform it all. I got to make it all this way now. So I have to go back and do it all. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, no, no, I can't. Like that just lives back there. That That's a Polaroid. <laughs> you know, that's a Polaroid picture of whatever it was. And that's that's how that one existed. Yeah. Uh, I, I, think, th- I, you think know, I think the content's still good, but production wise, it's it's pretty raw. Yeah, that, I think that's the only way you can be sane and like do something where you're putting out a lot of content. Like if I were, if I wanted to go back and redo the way I did show notes or like what I do now and apply it to things I was doing in like 2007 or 2008, like, I, yeah. I could probably wouldn't amount to much. I don't think anybody would probably notice except me, and I sure. probably have better better ways to use my time. Hopefully, so. right, right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Move <laughs> move forward with the newfound strengths. Instead of moving backwards with it, yeah. probably a good way to think about it. Yeah. Now, do you do? Do you do? I, I I've heard it, at least some. I think you're doing uh, over Skype, like we're doing. But are you trying to do it? Are you trying to chat with people in person when possible? If or? they're in LA, uh, I like to meet with them. Yeah, me too. Uh, I like I like the personal interactions. I like um, I like being able to read people. Yeah. And sometimes you can you can you know sometimes you can tell. Questions are based on what you're what you're getting, you know. Like I, I can I can know where to go a little bit if I'm if I'm seeing them, yeah, and watching their body language and all that. Um, phone is a little bit more difficult, but but I prefer to I prefer to do it in person if they're in LA, yeah. Yeah, I, I certainly prefer in person. Uh, I've I I keep on over the years. I keep on thinking. All right, I'm going to quit doing remote chats. I'm just going to do it. But of course, the problem with that is you're only chatting with people either when you're traveling or when they're in your same town. So sure. I but l- luckily, L.A. A similar experience. I'm sure a lot of people come through. Like for me, a lot of people come through San Francisco, and I live in a a pretty fun part of town. So have a little routine okay. where I go out. In little Italy is is. Uh, just a few blocks away from me so we go out and i'll chat with people in a park i've got my remote my my mobile gear that i'll bring and go oh, to cool. go to a cafe and I've, i sort of enjoy i i definitely i like the whole um experience of chatting uh face to face in fact what i've done the last two three years I'm definitely going to keep doing this is I've been taking one trip somewhere in the world and ju- just for the podcast and just interviewing people for the podcast. So in November, I went to Australia for about 10 days and I ju- I went to Melbourne and Sydney and, and it was great because I would go to see people's concerts and then, w- and then hang out mm. with them, go get some drinks. Yeah. We- then we chat and it was this like great sort of like uh, immersive right. You can experience. really connect with them and kind of be in their world instead of, meeting up somewhere for an hour and then shaking hands and, and taking off. That's, that's cool. Like really kind of enjoying their company for your trip. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's been fun, but yeah, in person is always, that that's always great. But, but I, I think that, I think that the, I don't see, I, I don't see how I'll ever stop doing at least some remote stuff, but it's definitely, it's definitely my, not my first choice. Sure. Sure. And some <laughs> of it's just convenience. Like everybody's, yeah. Everybody's got schedules, you know, and uh, sometimes that's just the way it works. I know even even in L.A. I've talked to people like, well, you know, maybe we can we can do a Skype call, too. Like, <laughs> that's cool. Like if, if we can't both find a find the same hour yeah. that we have free um, to make it happen in person. Yeah. Yeah, it can be tough. Yeah. And LA is a big place too. It's not just like, hey, come out, you know, like right. if, if it's somebody, you know, especially be, like being in West LA, which that's awesome. I love West LA. But, um, you know, if you're trying to connect with somebody, I don't know, 
Burbank or, or Pasadena or, yeah, or whatever. Right. It's, like you know. it, where I'm at, like I'm kind of <laughs> it's like the uh, like the Siberia of Los Angeles. Like I've been <laughs> exiled or something like it's fantastic because I live, you know, across the street from the ocean and I love it. And I love this. I love Venice. I truly yeah. love Venice. I like the history here, all that. Uh, but like nobody comes over here. You know, like, <laughs> even all my old friends from, like, North Hollywood, Burbank area are like, oh, man, yeah, we got to get together. Cool, dude, I'm around. Come on down. Let, let's go to the beach. Yeah. Uh, you know, let me know next time you're in the valley. <laughs> like, okay, dude. <laughs> cool. I, I love Venice, though. I, I don't know if you've uh, – t- 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 we mentioned Netflix earlier. Have you ever watched that yeah. show Flaked? Um, with Will Arnett, yes. I love. Yeah, that's like yeah. all shot on Abbott Kinney. I, I, I think. know, I know. I, I, uh, my wife and I took a vacation. Oh god, this is probably 2016 or something like that at this point. But um, and and stayed in um, stayed in uh, Venice or maybe what's just south of Venice when you when you're leaving? Is it Marina del Rey? That's south. Uh, Marina's of- just a little bit east. Maybe Playa. Maybe. I can't remember. Well, I don't know if we were in Venice proper. We were close. I mean, it was like a 15-minute walk or something up okay. to there. But, yeah, I just – I that's such a – that's such a uh, – cool i could i could definitely i could definitely see being very happy living there yeah there's a i mean it's you get close to the ocean you're gonna run into and well i mean at this point anywhere in los angeles the homeless thing is really a situation here uh there's a lot of that around you know most beaches unless it's a a really really kind of fancier beach you know, like you're gonna have a lot of homeless. So that's around, but I like. Uh, there's so much street art here on all the bu- buildings, and there's a lot of old buildings and old architecture, and I geek out on all that stuff. Yeah. It's a really, it's a really fun place to live. Well, and those those crazy canals and just like exploring oh, back yeah, there. Oh yeah, yeah, those that, are great. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. it's it's definitely that's I like I like uh, kind of f- funky, weird play. Like like I definitely I definitely. <laughs> could see being very comfortable in that yeah. in that area. Yeah, the only the only drag is like it takes me, you know, an hour to an hour and a half to get to all my gigs in LA <laughs> because I'm so far removed from the city kind of. Yeah. That, uh, like I had a rehearsal today earlier today in Hollywood and it took me about an hour to get there for no reason. Like there's no traffic wasn't that bad. It's just it's what it is now. Yeah, it's uh, that's that's uh, no joke. The traffic there. This yeah. is, this area is much smaller, but it is e- equally clogged uh, most oh, of the yeah. time. You know, um, yeah. But anytime you got to cross a bridge to get somewhere, you're you're just throwing, <laughs> right. throwing I feel a like monkey wrench. That's a good in. rule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. like that's a good rule. If there's a bridge, it's going to be a little delay. Yeah, we're looking at my wife. My wife works in San Francisco, which is part of why we're living in San Francisco. And then also we like just okay. like San Francisco. But boy, it's it, an amazing city. Yeah, it's a great place. And but like commuting from the East Bay into San Francisco, that is the direction you don't want to be going because you're just mm. it's like the entire, you know, that's that, that's the direction of traffic. And OK, I don't know. The direction of traffic in L.A. just seems like everywhere. Like it's all bad. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. You, you leave your you leave your apartment, you leave your house, you leave whatever you're living in. You're in the direction of traffic. Mm-hmm. Like you go outside, you're in traffic. It's, it's it's everybody's going everywhere all the time. What? How are you fitting? How are you fitting in? Uh, and I just, like I have a little more time in my life now in terms of the podcast, so it's not such a struggle. But I remember when I started, I was playing mm-hmm. a ton of gigs. I, I went back to school for a while, and I was okay. just, like like trying to find time to do what we're talking about. All the te- you know, laying out yeah. the things. It was like I was getting up at four in the morning. I was staying up till midnight. Like how are, how are you fitting all all of this in? Because I, I know I, I, that, I do it just like that. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> I, yeah. Like I mean. Uh... So I just uploaded, yeah, it was yesterday, I uh, just uploaded a new video tutorial on a Charlie Hayden transcription, and uh, and I try to make it not just the transcription, but, um, you know, so that's like, all right, here's here's some things we can learn from the solo, and here's then there's a separate video on how you can get that integrated into your playing, kind of like a practice guide video. So I shot the videos, then I was up all night editing the videos, and then... Uh, yeah, and then, you know, I took a couple of hours to sleep, woke up, had the rehearsal. Uh, I knew when we'd been talking about chatting, so I knew I'll be doing this today. And then when we get off the phone, back to transcribing. I got to shoot some Ray Brown videos and finish some transcriptions, and it's it's nonstop. 
Like yeah. it's it's just like this revolving door of always something to do. And maybe you felt like this. I don't know. Maybe you still do. Then like if you take any personal time, you know, I mean, you mentioned you were married. So it's probably not to this degree because you and your wife, I'm sure, carve out time together. But like if I take any personal time to meet up with a friend, go out and get a bite, whatever, like I just feel guilty. Uh, like, well, like, man, I got I got one more course of that Ray Brown thing. What am I doing here? Like, uh, you know, I wanted to start it on the Scott LaFaro one. Like, I really got to just get back to it. It's uh, it's 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 interesting. I love doing it, and it doesn't feel like a chore. But it, there's always like this phantom guilt. Uh, like, dude, there's so much you need to be doing. Yeah, <laughs> got to get back to it. Well, you know, I think there are seasons in life for all sorts of things. And I think that having like a real, you're just like pedal to the metal uh, chunk of time and feeling like that, I think that that can be a good thing because you wouldn't, if you were thinking like, ugh, the last thing I want to do is this. Well, then that's right. your, your body or your energy telling you something. But like, it sounds like you're, you're pumped to do it. And I, I definitely have, have had, especially when I was like those first few years particularly blogging even more than even before i started the podcast i would just like spend every waking moment that i wasn't you know at rehearsal or whatever um i decided yeah. i decided a few years ago to just start um uh, keeping like business hours so i work i work eight to five whatever that work means monday through friday i don't do a thing on saturday or sunday um, okay and i say i mean my life is very specific i but I, I i say no to every gig that's not the san francisco symphony um okay and then i spend a lot of time traveling just from i i decided uh and we can save this for the base shed podcast because you know, people have heard this yeah. before in mind but i decided in, <laughs> in 2015 uh we were living in chicago to, a couple decades in chicago and then moving out here, I knew all my work was going to vanish. And I just decided to pretend the podcast was my job and see what would happen. And so I just, sure. I, I just started, um, I just would get up every Monday morning and work eight hours a day on it. And my wife would come home and we'd have a normal. So I, but that was not the way it was when I was starting. It was chaos and it was like yeah. working late at night and then it just opportunity led to opportunity. And so it sort of has become it. I have what you'd call a, because of my podcast career, like I do work with a bunch <laughs> of different companies. So like revenue comes in from the podcast, but it's more like a, it's been a, it's been a introduction into various, various other things. So I go and do a lot of talks and consulting and uh, shoot work with. Yeah. Just a whole. No, I think, I think that's amazing. And uh, a friend of mine named Nicholas Recuber, who is the yeah. assistant principal at, you know, Nicholas, I know him. How do I know him? Tell, tell me what he, what he does. He's the assistant principal in Colorado at that symphony. Oh yeah, sure. So, sure. so I met him back in like Oh six or Oh seven out here in LA. And I took some, some classical lessons for him. Cause I was trying to get, uh, just my overall playing together to audition for some schools in New York. And I was just like deep in it. Um, and then we, we stayed in touch and stuff. And I think, I think some members of his section have been on your podcast. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what he, uh, Steve, what he said about that. Steve Metcalf is lo- like, he's the principal in Colorado. Um, okay. and, and I, I chatted with him and Susan, uh, Susan, Oh no, Jason, Susan Cahill. <laughs> um, okay. who's another bassist in the orchestra. She's been on the podcast too. And maybe somebody else, but definitely those two. Yeah. When I was talking to him, that, that was a fun one. We did that at a food court in a mall. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, he was in nice. town, but we were talking about contra based conversations and, and he and he kind of referenced that that uh you know you you i i know you from the podcast but he's like man no like the podcast has led to all these other opportunities for him and i'm like man that's it's so cool that you know things like that can happen for the do-it-yourself or uh these days i think it's i think it's great uh i i did mine i started mine for a different reason I mean, it would be great if it turned revenue. It does not, but uh, <laughs> that's a lo- that's a whole other thing. I feel like I gotta like suss that out to somebody at some point because I don't I don't have time or energy to dig into all that. Sure. Um, but uh, I think it's cool that uh, you know things like that can happen. That you can monetize all these things, and you know, and you can really kind of just monetize your mind because that's what it is. Like we're just having a conversation, sharing our ideas about. Uh, the profession and the instrument and you know it can turn into something that's you know you can make a little make a little something off of I think it's fantastic 
Yeah, it's interesting. Like for me, I've I've never tried to make this podcast be or do anything. Like I like I've mm-hmm. never I've never had a business plan with. It's turned into I guess a, a business of sorts. But I really still think it's like. What what I was saying, where it's like it's an opportunity to carve out time. Um, it's yeah. it's it's kind of like uh, getting a free lesson <laughs> with people, yeah. you know, and 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 picking people's brain and 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 uh, just just um, it's been it's just been a fun outlet, and it it never. In fact, when I've tried to do something specific with it, it almost never works. <laughs> it's like it's got its own life. <laughs> I, I definitely when I when I when I kind of hung out my own shingle in 2015. 2016, and I was really trying to figure out a way to monetize it, and mm-hmm. n- nothing was really working that well. I mean, I got some advertisers, but that just kind of th- it pays, especially once I got people to start helping. That that just kind of m- helps pay for the whole, you know, and the email right. lists and the hosting of very, you know, well, you know what, you know, uh, sure, um, right. It just kind of all washed out. Yeah, and and yeah. when I sort of like relaxed on the idea of trying to like uh, monetize in, in every way I could think of, uh, things started to happen. So it's just one of those crazy yeah. karmic <laughs> things. Yeah, no, I, that's yeah, I agree with that. And there's a point to uh, go back to what you said. I was treating it like a job. I was supposed to. I think it was around this time. No, it was last May. Mm-hmm. And I was supposed to go do a tour in the summer for in Dubai. And um, given where I was at in life, like that would have been a nice just change of pace for the summer. Yeah. That ended up falling through. But then while I was in town, I'm like, well, all right, well, you know. And I had I not already told people, not everybody, but enough people like, oh, man, looks like I'm going to be going to Dubai here. So, like, heads up, you might need to get somebody – you know, to cover me mm-hmm. on, on a bunch of gigs I was doing. So now all of a sudden, like I'm, I'm in town <laughs> and all the guys, all these contractors and band leaders I work with, well, they already think I'm out. Yeah. I'm like, ah, so there's a little bit of lull in work there for a couple of weeks, but I decided to refocus that time on doing, doing an episode every week, which, um, I believe you do more than one a week, right? How many do you put out a week? Yeah, my, I, it makes no sense what I do, but it's just sort of what okay. happened. I do, I put out two a week, and I've been doing that for like years. And I and I would never yeah. recommend anybody do that. It's like a it's a it's a dumb format. That's a blistering. But, that's a blistering pace. Like it doesn't. It might only seem like two to people that don't know what the work that goes into doing it. But that's a pretty. That's a pretty strong pace. Yeah, I, 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 it's, I don't know why it's ended up being that, but it just sort of, it's sort of, um, with the, you know, I, I, I've ended up doing, uh, I'll, I'll go to events or like I was in Australia and I did like a ton of podcasts and then I'll, okay. and then I'll, so for me, I, I do, I batch things. So I'm doing five interviews today. Um, okay. and then I won't do any for like a, a, a month maybe. And then I'll go and I'll do 25 at an event. And then right. but so so I I if I the problem is like if I go and do twenty five at an event that there the some of those people aren't going to be on the show for like six months right yeah and and so it just I don't know and and so I don't always put out sometimes I do like this whole month of March is like thematic stuff hi- highlight I've been episodes seeing that. yeah I've been seeing that I think that's cool um have you had a chance to reach out to the Sorry to hijack you. No, please. That's <laughs> if you listen to the podcast, you realize like I just get carried away and get on tangents. Uh, the the documentary that's supposed to be coming out, I think it's. I don't think it's come out yet. It's uh, the Legends of Jazz Bass or something. Have you have you heard about this documentary? Oh, sir! When it comes out, you'll see a quote from yours truly on the. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I gave I gave a testimonial that I've only checked out. I haven't checked out the entire thing, but I have. Um, uh, and I've had him on the podcast. And of course, I'm blanking his name. Nick, Nick Wells, Nick Wells. Yeah, he works with Scott Divine, Scott's Bass Lessons. Okay, and, sure. And so he. I want to get. I want to get him on uh, the director or producer. What, yeah. what does Nick do for it? Did he direct it? I believe Nick is the director of it. Yeah, Nick's a super okay. great guy. You should. He'd, he'd love to come on. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've, so so it looks amazing. I can't wait for it to come out. I know that they're crowdfunding like the the final editing and everything. So I think it's still okay. Still not out yet, as far as I know. But it should be hopefully soon. Yeah, I don't know what made me think of that. I don't. 
apologize yeah. again. No, for, uh... no, no, please. No, but but uh, yeah, <laughs> Nick, Nick Wells is is the is the director, and uh, yeah, really interesting guy. It sounds like an amazing. And man, putting together a documentary, that's like, that's like doing one of those, oh, I know what might have made you think of that, that like those, those uh, highlight shows are kind of like a little right. micro documentary. Um, exactly. That's what made me think what, of it. What I, what I like to think of it, when I'm doing those is that I'm like writing a book in audio form very, very slowly. Like I've probably done about two, uh, 15 to 20 of those over the years. And each of those I could see being a chapter in a book, you know, okay. like sort of synthesizing what people have talked about over the years. Um, sure. So yeah, it's fun. I think it's fun to like take a step back and, and the, I, I, I enjoy doing those. It sort of makes me think about what, what I've been, what we've been talking about in the podcast. And it's always like universal stuff. It's not like, you know, I'm not going to do an episode on coronavirus. We'll let that go. But like <laughs> talking about work, work habits or practicing or audition sure. success or fi uh, fighting through failure or all those kind of things, you know, those, those evergreen topics are what those are. Yeah. I'm always interested in having guests on that, um, that have a, a, something kind of specific mm -hmm. uh, in their career that's different from from just talking about like you know uh, you know I just I, nobody needs to hear another electric bass player talk about James Jamerson or Jaco Pastores <laughs> like we get it we get it those guys were great cool can we move on like there's <laughs> So, you know, I, my friend Joe, uh, who did an episode with me is the bass player on American Idol. Cool, mm -hmm. man. What's that like? Like, dude, you got, you got a lot of people's dream gig. Like talk to me about being on TV with the Idol band, something like that. Or, um, she's also been the guest on Contrabass, uh, Valentina. Oh, Valentina Tried... Cerdelli. Yeah. yeah. I was listening to your episode with her. I'm so glad that you two connected. She's great. Yeah. Yeah. She is great. She is great. She's got, she has a lot of cool. She's coming from a cool place with what she's doing. I'm glad I got to uh, chat with her about that. And so I like I like talking to people from kind of different walks of life. Like the base is what's uniting us all. But now I want to hear their specific story. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's what excites me about it is like <clears throat> just the nature of uh, music as a whole bringing us together, but specifically the instrument. Um, so there's already this kind of level of understanding you know, we're cool with it. We're cool with each other. There's a lot of things we have in common already. But now, like, tell me about your avenue within this, because that's it may be similar to mine or it may be completely different. Um, you know, Valentina's is completely different than mine. And I, I loved it. I loved having that conversation with her. Oh yeah, she is. She is great. She has been on my podcast a, a surprisingly large number of times. I think she's. Uh, we're coming up on our third episode here. I actually have one in the can. Oh, wow. um, but it's great because I'm a. I've been ever since I was like 16 a big Frank Zappa fan, and that's you know okay. that's that's her wheelhouse. So I've had these yeah. hilariously specific conversations about Zappa that I you know wasn't expecting to have with any bass player or anybody really. So <laughs> right, right, and, right. yeah, no, she's she's a she's got a really interesting path. Um, so yeah. I'm glad that you two connected. That's awesome. Yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. And, uh, so, I, but I do, you know, I do kind of also like talking about practice habits and seeing, you know, what people's thing is. Maybe I can learn something from it. Maybe it's good for the listeners. You know, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know the, the complete demographic of who listens, you know, like I, and I'm sure you obviously, you know, the same too. Like I know some them demographics i know countries and stuff that are listening to it but i don't know the playing levels of the people that listen to my podcast <clears throat> so maybe hearing practice tips from pros is beneficial uh i hope so it is if you know those yeah. people are listening well you know, i always wonder like what what a podcast would have been like for me at 17 yeah like if i if i would have had a chance to listen, you know, at 17, and I'm just trying to figure it all out uh, for the very first time. Uh, I wonder what kind of impression that would have made on me. I, like, I get carried away with things like that <laughs> a lot. <laughs> uh, like, huh, that's a fascinating idea. Yeah. Like, YouTube and all this stuff. Like, you know, I had Bass Player Magazine, and there's the magazine I'm sure you're aware of called Double Bassist that was really hard to find. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think it came out quarterly. Uh, yeah, was, sadly, it disappeared. Uh, uh, while it was short-lived. Um, 
it was. I mean, it, by the time I started reading it, I think it was only around for maybe like another two or three years or something. Yeah, it was published by the same people that published the Strad, which is this uh, okay. str- string centric magazine. Yeah, beautifully done, but you know, it's times change quickly, and like magazine, physical magazine publishing seems to be uh, uh, an area that's challenging to make a profit on. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. We could <laughs> putting it mildly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but I, I used to just, you know, go to go to Borders and just read it at Borders, not even buy it sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Just read the whole thing. Um, or Bass Player Magazine. Like I was still really involved with base publications. But um, I, I think younger people that are getting introduced to the instrument and I mean younger within their musical journey, not necessarily just age, but there, there's so many more resources than, uh, you know, you and I had, or even generations before us. Right. Um, yeah. It's really just the amount of information that's out there. And I, I'm curious if it gets overwhelming to them at times, you know, if I like going back to Netflix, if I want to watch a movie, there's so many movies. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, uh, I just get tired of scrolling after a while. I wonder if they think, I wonder if they think that about podcasts and base publications and online whatevers. It's just like, ah, oh, there's so much. I don't even know where to start. Yeah. No, it's, it's a, it's a different, yeah, it's a, that's a diff, a different challenge for sure. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm curious myself what, uh, it's hard, it's hard to know. We just have our experience where we are of, yeah, exactly. of this stuff. No, but it's, it's, it's been interesting watching for me, like how podcast, I remember when I first got into podcasts, that'd be like 15 years ago, you know, I had my iPod video and I would, I would download them, you know, on, my Wi-Fi, onto my, you know, in, in iTunes, and sync them over. And when I was out of town, I have to go find a library and get in their free Wi-Fi and hook. And they, <laughs> to just sort of watch that smartphone adoption, and and it's just it's interesting how. And then to watch students uh, at, at any age or level like, come in and how they're using YouTube, like just to teach themselves all kinds of things. It's a beautiful thing. I mean, it's really it's really interesting. Um, how and I mean me. There are so many things in my life that I've learned 100 percent from YouTube these days. You know, I like sure. like, like it's just it's uh, unbelievable um, wh- how that's changed. Just how I learn. Yeah, and I think starting the podcast and having to get into things like video editing and uh, tutorials I'd have to look up was probably, and this has all been within maybe the last year and a half. My really first time at going to YouTube for education. Hmm. Cause I, I had never done that before. Like I would always look it up somewhere else or, um, I, I kind of like the idea of like opening books and going and actually researching things that way or going through a bunch of websites to pull apart, you know, uh, information on a topic or something. But it's that, that was the first time I really started getting into YouTube for an educational purpose. And it's, I get it. I completely get it. Like you type mm-hmm. in a couple keywords and then like bing, whatever you need to know is right in front of you. Uh by like fifteen people. Yeah. Uh but yeah, it's it's crazy. And it, which automatically, you know, makes me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh wow. <laughs> oh wow. You guys know about this thing called YouTube? This is pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it's it's interesting trying to I've I enjoy I enjoy making videos. It's a very different thing for me, at least the way I try try to do it or am trying to do than than the podcast, which feels like a very sort of normal this like this conversation feels like something we could be having just like hanging out in LA or here in San Francisco. Sure. Like the whole video creation but I but I also feel like making videos is good for me and I've been trying to get into this. I, I at at this point I think we have almost four thousand blog posts on my blog written wow. mo- mostly by me but but a lot of guests and so I've been w- with with uh, Trevor who we were talking about I've been going yeah. through and looking at some good stuff from the past and like resurrecting it kind of dusting it okay. off taking the like 2006 2007 imagery out and putting some better stuff in and I've been trying yeah. to trying to shoot a video to go with it anything new on okay. the blog I'm just trying to like shoot a video it doesn't matter you know i don't even care if anybody watches the video i mean i guess i'd rather they watch the video but i but it's <laughs> yeah, more yeah. <laughs> it's more like just an exercise exercise for me to get better at um that so have you ever have you ever attempted the video lessons thing i've taught some video lessons uh have you done that uh or, i or, mean or, i 
I do like I, I have um I have some Skype students, so I, I do that. But I meant like the pre-recorded oh, video lessons. Well, <laughs> yeah, yes, actually, I just um about six weeks ago came back from England. I was sh- I shot two courses with this company, Discover Double Base, and yeah, yeah. So, so I have. A, I have uh, what's his name again? Uh, Jeff Chalmers. Jeff's yeah. just all good, good, <laughs> good people all around. And and, and like man, that it couldn't be more professional the way that that was done. So yeah. I, so that I did that one, I did that. And then, and I can save this for the base shed if, if uh, you want, sure. but, but I've got enough. I also, that was not my first base course. I did another base course with a company that got raided by the FBI and was taken down in a giant <laughs> uh, Ponzi scheme. I kid you not hundred percent true. And I've <laughs> never completely saved that story. Completely okay. saved I've, that story. I've never seen this course. I know I filmed it. They flew me out. They paid me. <laughs> <laughs> All I have is like one little clip they shared on social media. So, so I've done, I've never done, I've never done it on my own. Um, and part of it is just because I like, I thought about doing it and then that other company approached me. And so I did sure. that. Then they got raided by the FBI, <laughs> uh, which is where that story. And so did was, you ever find out what happened? Well, hold on. I want to say that. I have okay. so many questions about it. I have so many questions I, about Yes, the that. story just gets more entertaining as it goes. But yeah. And, Great. Um, but, uh, but, and then, and then I started talking right after that happened, I started talking with Jeff and I realized that like just like I'm trying to get better at making YouTube videos or like up the podcast or up the public speaking that I do and I just thought like I, I, I Jeff will probably do a better job of this or not probably will do a better job of this <laughs> than than I would um, and my plate feels full of projects so I was more sure. than happy to to part and actually it was kind of cool to, to do, it's way more extensive what I did with Jeff than what I did for the other company um, and it was kind of cool to have a dress rehearsal in, in a sense of oh, wow. going and filming and doing an entire course. And then it, they, you know, it's like, surprise, that's never coming out. Um, so, uh, the, so I, I, I tried to use that as a learning experience. So that's a very long way of saying, uh, yes, kind of, <laughs> but not, yeah. not, not like, not like what you're doing though. How, how did you feel about that? Cause I remember, I mean, I have, I, I don't even know so many gigabytes of video that I would just get in my head about like I I cut I cut the thing I'm like no I don't know I don't know I don't know if I it's so being able to talk about something whatever whatever it is you're trying to communicate without having feedback yeah. from a student is the most bizarre thing ever yeah and I I remember you know the first couple I did that will never see the light of day um I'm talking about with some Motown bass lines or something. And it's, I mean, I don't know how much I have to explain something. Yeah. You know, like, okay, well, if I'm talking about, you know, for once in my life starts in F major, do I have to talk all the way about the circle of fifths and go all the way, you know, Mm -hmm. like (laughs) how Mm -hmm. far back do I have to go? At what point is there a foundational level of understanding you know, and I don't know where that is. I still don't know where that is. I try to cover, be as thorough as I can as it relates to what I'm talking about now. But it, that that always, uh, that was always really in the back of my head. And I couldn't ever, I don't know how much to talk about. I don't know how, I don't want to assume, I don't want to talk ab- above a student's head. Yeah. And then I don't also want to someone coming to learn something so specific that I'm talking about something that isn't related to the topic. So I don't want the the person who's really interested in the one very specific thing to have to sit there and listen through, you know, a major scale formula. I mean, all he wants to do is learn Motown. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a really bizarre way to organize information. Mm-hmm. I agree. Uh, yeah. And what was what was your course that you did for uh, Discover Double Base? Well, we did two. We did one that was like a, a beginner's course, like totally. This is your first time picking up a bass. Here's how to pick up the bass. Here's the name of the strings, okay. up to like kind of getting to the the octave harmonic, and then one that I think we're going to call Beyond Beginner, um, which is like sort of like the next level. And we had some compo. We commissioned four composers to write pieces that are like kind of for that level, and it was a really oh cool cool project. But man, if you look at my notes, like like I uh, I would I would like 
do an outline, create musical examples, practice through them. And I would actually practice like fake teaching, you know, myself sure. in a room, like a, like a maniac. And then, and then I'm like yeah. scribbling. I, I have it on my iPad and I'd write all these notes to myself and then kind of rinse and repeat. And so I, I, um, and then when I was in England, every day I would wake up and I would spend a couple hours just like going over the, and, and just working, 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 trying to make it better. So, and I, I with that, I sort of realized I was like, okay, it's never going to be good enough. Um, I can always make it better. It's like, it's like preparing for a concert or something, you know, you can always make it better. You can always make that piece better. Yeah. And it's, it's really is like, um, I, I do the same thing. I like, I'll talk through it, you know, um, sometimes in front of a camera. Yeah. Sometimes I'll record it. Most of the time I won't record it, but it's, it's as if it's recording. And, um, and like I'm doing it, just like a complete mock, you know, or a dress rehearsal or something. And, and I'll go through it and I'll talk about it make sure that I'm, and my pacing is good, but my energy's up, you know, and I'm still hitting all the points without sounding too scattered yeah. or, or reading notes too much and looking away from the camera too much. Right. Um, so that the shots are longer and it's not just a bunch of jump cuts. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I'm thinking about all this stuff. I'm thinking about like, what's the editing going to be like? I'm thinking about what's the lighting like? I'm thinking about, you know, getting the arc of what I want to communicate out of here. And, uh, and last night when I was doing the editing, on the Charlie Hayden stuff, you know, I watched it after I got it all done. I'm like, you know what? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good with that. Nice. I'm good with that. I'm okay with that. Now, saying that, I'll probably get an email. <laughs> uh... <laughs> what does this mean? Why, why didn't you talk about this? Um, that's fine. Well, you know, uh, like like the podcast. What a great self improvement exercise that is, though. You get, you know, it like is. like if it, I love projects that where like you're you're helping yourself in multiple capacities. Like like you're making your 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 you're teaching yourself. I'm I would imagine how to deliver something more clearly. How to like eliminate verbal ticks like ums and ahs because you get so sure. sick of editing those out. How to just like 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 there's there's aside from the time expenditure there's really no downside to getting better at that that's the sort of stuff that would that would help in any in like multiple domains in life so that's what yeah you know i i agree i agree and i think every um being able to do the podcast has kind of honed on some of those you know just personal things within conversation and listening skills yeah um because you really you really have to be attentive and kind of make these this is how i think about it i'm listening to a guest talk and they'll say something and i try not to interrupt them sometimes i do uh but i, I kind of just put a little marker in that I'm like okay you know in the back of my mind remember to circle back to whatever that was because i want to come into that and you're still listening for it and asking hopefully engaging questions about what their as the as their story and conversation progresses, but you kind of, you're making these little checkpoints Mm -hmm. and then I can, after kind of doing enough episodes, I I realized that and started doing that in day-to-day life too. And I I think it's helped my overall just communication in the world, which is fantastic. Um, and then even doing all the, the stuff I do with the videos and, and the transcribing, like it's really, it's dealt with almost every aspect of me um, you know, transcribing and having to play all this stuff is definitely helped my playing. Yeah. Um, the video editing thing and all that stuff like you, you now you're aware <laughs> of facial expressions or just mm-hmm. how, you know, sometimes like it looks like I just don't care. Like, <laughs> all right, come on, Ryan. Like you got to look like you're more engaged, buddy. Come on, get in the yeah. game here. Yep. And I you know, just have like this resting face of apathy. <laughs> <laughs> you act like you care about what you're talking about. Uh, so it's been a lot. It's been a lot of kind of taking your own inventory, so to speak, of just, all right, well, this yeah. is all really going on. But it's, I, I love it. I love every aspect of it. Um, at some point, I would like to turn something over to somebody because it is a lot. But, uh, you know, because I'm also just a freelance musician in L.A., so I have all that. 
Yeah, it's hard, and it, and it can be really challenging to figure out what to turn over to people and how, and and like in a way, if you don't do it right, you can like ma- you can jack things up in a way that that could be pretty significant. So it's a, it's really it's tough, and it's been fun to watch um, Jeff Chalmers, uh, one person, and other people discovered old base to see how he's brought people on board, and um, yeah, it's really. I don't know how long he's been doing that, but he seems like he's really picking up speed quick with. All that yeah he's been doing it i believe since 2015 early 2015 okay. and then um but he's really changed the way that he's done yeah he's he's been uh collaborating with with multiple people i think he's done 15 courses with other people now it was jeff and then and then lauren pierce wonderful bassist sure. and teacher and then sure. and then he sort of moved on from there so yeah i think the last one i remember uh seeing some promotion for was uh john goldsby yep yeah i think that was i don't know if that was the last one but i remember seeing that one and um i, I always like what goldsby does he's uh i like oh, yeah i like how dp goes into the to the tradition of jazz bass um then he's written i know he wrote what was it called the jazz bass book or something was kind of like almost artist profiles on all the whole <laughs> the whole kind of uh from the beginning of of jazz bass he kind of went through it all it's, it's a great uh, it's a great i book. love all that yeah, yeah yeah i was just paging through that today actually like mo- oh, really? in, in moving a bunch of books from one place to another and just uh, that but that was one of the books that i moved when i moved out to california i got rid of a lot of things but i kept the jazz bass book and uh yeah john's john's great Hey man, yeah. you know what? I've got a I got a two o'clock on the on the calendar. I was talking about doing those five. I I, I think we got, I think I got to wrap it up on my end. I, it's sick. Okay. We're, we're we're just getting going, <laughs> so <laughs> so we have to so we have to do a round two at some at some point um, I, or I a round three to. or I'd love to. Okay. Ryan, you rock, man. Thanks so much for chatting. And again, folks, thebaseshed.com. That's his show. Follow along. I am always excited when I open up my podcast app. I use Overcast, and I see that there's a new episode out. He had Trevor Jones on the podcast, actually, recently. Trevor works with me on the podcast and the blog, and we've got a whole bunch of new things in store for you. So definitely follow along. Well, I guess you are following along if you're listening. And if you're at this point, you're probably a true follower if you're at this point. So also, I'm going to just keep chatting about this until it happens. Our International Online Base Summit is coming soon. BaseSummit.org is the website. Check that out. Get on the email list about that. Get signed up for that. we got a great rate going for that, so that would be wonderful. I'm working on that with Barry Green, partnering with the International Society of Bases to put that together, the ISB, so many great guests, John Clayton, and uh, oh my goodness, why can't I only think of John Clayton right now? <laughs> Gary Carr, Francois Raboff, the list goes on and on so definitely would love to see you there at that event pull the base community together for something online where we're all stuck at home thanks for listening what more can i say i appreciate you i appreciate the team that puts these together michael cooper and steve hinchy mitch mooring trevor jones and krista copper mitch mooring makes beautiful award-winning bases in the dallas fort worth area learn more at mitchmooring.com i am your host now and for the past 14 years or whatever jason heath and we will see you again soon for more life on the low end this background